Shlomo was our neighbor. Shlomo and Olivia were our neighbors. And what I always remember was that uh, every year for numerous years when I would come home on Yom Kippur after fasting and be, I was finished. Motze Yom. Yom Kippur. So Shlomo would send over one of his kids and call me in for a little fabreng and a little schnapps. And uh, as Doreen can tell you, I, I, I was in my pajamas at the end of the day. I was, and, and the only person I would leave the house for was Shlomo Schwartz. Uh, he, he was not only a neighbor, um, uh, he was a friend. And I was heading Hillel and he was working with Chabad. Um, and we crossed a lot of boundaries together. And that was, I think, Shlomo's calling card. He was available for everyone. And he, he taught us a lot. He gave us a lot of lessons about love uh, and caring and laughing and laughing. And the other thing that's memorable, because there's no one like him, was aside from his T-shirts, he also had a table full of buttons, every type of button possible, with every cause, uh, every movement. And the table was what invited people in. Where? They, where? Where did he do this? At UCLA, he did this and on campus on, Bru on Bruin Walk. Uh -huh. He was a fixture on Bruin Walk, and here was this sort of crazy rabbi who was wearing a frock coat and who opened his frock coat to a t-shirt, different t-shirt every day. And people, people would simply, they were attracted by the stra seeming strangeness, but it didn't take too long to know this is, a re this is someone who's genuine. And they were attracted by the personality, by the, by the invitation that he presented just in himself. And it had an impact on a lot of, on a lot of people's lives. And uh, I was, I, I, I told, told Olivia, I think that Shlomo's presence helped reduce people, the tension in people's lives, because he brought, he brought some dimension uh, uh, to you that came from somewhere else. And it wasn't about, you know, what, what was, in the, what the politics of the day were. It was beyond all that. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, what was his connection with Hillel? Well, he, uh, he, well was, the connection was that in our time, we actually cooperated. I think, I don't know what, how many, in those days, it was unheard of that Chabad and Hillel were, were working together on, on most campuses. And, you know, we would do programs together. Single thing, things for young adults. We had speakers together. We, I, Olivia just reminded me. You know, we had spiritual programs. We, ordered, we brought in a, a, a singer, and so I call Shlomo, we get people to come over on um, Motzei Shabbos, and and and, uh, and we, we did some we did them and we did them at Hillel, and they came. We did some of them on campus. I, I forgot all about that, and there was no institutional business going on. You're not allowed to do that. It's uh, you know a violation. Hillel is uh, pluralistic, and Chabad is uh, is from, uh, and and, and uh, I, it was good for all of us. I think we I think we actually once. Once we, 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 we brought, we, we had Shlomo Karbach came by one night and Shlomo was there, you know, so uh, of course with, he had invited people to come as well. And we met, we met some good people. You know who that's where, what's her name? Uh, um, so, uh, what's her name? Who, who has, oh, she was, they were involved in meditation and I met them at Hillel's. You know who I'm talking about. He's in real estate. He, I am forgetting their names. Oh, all right, I'm forgetting all the names. He he brought us a lot of people. Uh -huh. but, but as Chabad rabbis go, or Lubavitch rabbis go, what kind of a, a, a role did he play in the hierarchy of uh, of good works in the community? Uh huh. He, 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 I mean, he he didn't play a role in the hierarchy of, of Chabad. I don't think he played. Right, right. I mean, what what what? I, I tell you, Shlomo was a known presence. So that the, there was, I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't even know if I would use the term hierarchy. Everyone who, who was sort of hanging out in Jewish life knew about Schwartzy. And they knew that it was a place to go. And, I, I, and, and the home, his home was a crossroads. There were people from Hollywood who came to his home. There were politicians who came to his home. And there were people off the street who came to his home. They knew that this it was a, it was an open house. Not only was I mean, so there was food available. There was good conversation, and there was some learning, and there was something spirited about it. You would go, you know, Shlomo was able to to get you sort of high on 
not necessarily in on 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 uh, on on any drugs or or, or and with a little bit of alcohol, but the, you were high because you were in a, in a in a in a good in a really good place. Uh, he would say you were in a place in the presence, in the presence, and that was a he had an had an enormous talent for that with his family. Look at his kids. I think that they, they ref, they're reflections of of his of his of the, his qualities and his personality. And of course Olivia was a great is a great partner, is an amazing partner. Would you like to say something, my dear? No. No, okay. I mean I'll need to echo uh, the idea that uh, Shlomo was not hierarchical at all. Shlomo greeted every Jew and saw the essence of every Jew that he met. And I think that was his most significant talent. He had this remarkable X-ray vision, a capacity to see and to strip away all the inessentials and get to the essence of the person and love the essence of the person. He more, more perfectly and more powerfully than anybody else I've ever known was able to translate the idea of loving your fellow Jew uh, as though he were your own. And that's why I think that he knew as many people as he did, that he will be as rem remembered by as many people as he will, because everybody who knew him knew that they had a genuine relationship with him. Mm -hmm. Whether it was attenuated and brief and spe you know, specific, or it was much broader, whether you were in his life in only one sliver of your life, or you were in his life very broadly. He brought that kind of attention to the detail of the relationship. And he was unique in that way. And he was also unique because, as Chaim said, he was able to make people relax in his presence. He was unthreatening. I just thinking about that. How un in, in, his, in his presence, there was nothing that was threatening to you. He, he, with his, I mean, he looked, I'm right, he looked like uh, from, uh, from man. But the, it was completely welcoming. He was a disarming. He was Dis a from man, but yes. he but he had such a big smile and such an open this, face right. and and big eyes that were hungry to know you and that genuinely wanted to make a connection with you. And I think everyone who uh, he talked to felt that from him. So that was his greatest talent, his ability to connect with people. He wasn't the most learned man in the universe, or at least he didn't parade his learning around. What he led with was his personal strength in relating to other people. And I think for that he'll be remembered by everyone in Los Angeles who knew him. That was his really most that was, special that was gift. His blessing. Yeah. It's a blessing. That we all we, we were all blessed with by Shlomo in that way. As as people who have organized many Friday night dinners, what do you think of, about what the uh, the Schwartz family have held here in terms of their uh, Friday night open houses? I, look, you know, I'll I'll tell you uh, I, what what as someone who who did a lot of that that it it's an it's an unbelievably sacrificial act on behalf of. Uh, the community and the Jewish people. It means that, because it means that, uh, in and especially in our uh, in our time period, that privacy isn't a value. That the people that you love and that you bring in become foremost in your life, um, and uh, that's. Uh, he was a master at this. That's right. I, I mean, so a lot of that comes out through Chabad and what Chabad does. But it was his own particular form that I think, uh, in many ways, he was a, he was a teacher of how to do this. Whatever they used to call it, outreach work. He was the he was the ma the, the, the master, yeah. uh, and and uh, and did it you know in ways in which no one else no one else can replicate it because of his his unique personality. He knew many worlds, you know. It was just. We just look at a picture of him sitting on a Harley Davidson. I mean, how many, uh, you know, and, and, and the, that hat he had, the great, he was at the Grateful Dead concerts. And, and, yes. and I remember him telling me that they did Havdalah or something at a Grateful Dead concert. Well, no one even thought about doing something like that until Shlomo came, came on the scene. Right? So he, he broke through in that way. He broke through barriers uh, in, in the most spiritual way possible. Did you feel a rivalry? <laughs> Sometimes, well, you know, it's an interesting question. You know, I, you know, I was thinking about that now. That when I was younger, I sometimes, you know, would feel well, Chabad, Hillel, and so on and so forth. But you know, 
the fact is, he, as I said, he made it so that it was a non-issue. And to the point, I'll tell you what he, what he did for, for me. Because in this, in, in this way, because I think Chabad, and at least in Westwood, politically had, was not that interested in approaching me. So, and he uh, sort of uh, affirmed me in a way. He, it was, didn't, it was, he, he didn't recognize those boundaries and yeah, borders. He, he, he was affirming. And, and we talked, we, 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 we learned, we, I mean, we, we, we talked in learning, we talked about Hasidut, and, and it was wonderful. It was really marvelous, you know, and, and all, always open and available. 